Greetings, Earthlings. It's Nancy Love now from the Micro Peace Project, the Planet Peace Project. Um, well, I've been listening to Jordan Peterson. Jordan, Jordan Peterson, if you don't know who that is, and you should, believe me, you should. He's one of the most fabulously intelligent human beings on this planet. I have one of the highest IQs in uh, the history of human tests and assessments. So when I say someone's one of the smartest people on earth, listen up. I'd be one to know. I started reading from all the world's religions when I was seven. The same week, I started studying subatomic physics. And the reason I wanted to study both religion and physics simultaneously is because I thought that they were equivalent bodies of knowledge using different vernaculars to probably teach me much the same thing. What I got out of all that is that, you know, by the time I was eight or nine, people were saying, what did you get? And I would say that half of religion is the study of who you are, what you are, what your consciousness is, why you're here, and what is your relationship to the creator or all of creation. But fully half of it, and this is the big surprise to me as a kid and to the people I spoke to about this, is that fully half of religion is about service and about your relationship to others. Fully half of religion isn't about navel-gazing and who am I and what's it all about, Alfie. It's about everybody else. Every other human being you will ever encounter. Every other plant or animal form you will encounter. And the world itself. So, Jordan Peterson had this uh, phrase, tragic, uh, desperate knowledge and tragic awareness. And that really resonates with me, because if everybody came out of denial, desperate knowledge and tragic awareness, or tragic knowledge and desperate awareness, would lead us to stop breathing in captivity. Yeah, buddy. We would not be overpopulating the planet and causing, I repeat, causing things like the SARS virus that has caused a pandemic that has now taken about 5.7 million people in a very short time and will take more. And when it's uh, gone, then something will take its place because the Earth Ah, the earth is going to eat us alive because we haven't taken care of our home. The garden is springing up weeds and it is going to, and those weeds are going to devour us. So, use your opposable thumb to get your cell phone and call a sterilization center and go get yourself sterilized. If you're a man, you're Kind of indefinitely a breeding age. If you're a woman still in your breeding age, please do seriously consider not adding to the human overpopulation problem because there's a there's an old concept in um, Native American philosophy, excuse me, that talks about the river. Um, a group of people came to the river and they planted fields and gathered berries and did whatever they do and put their waste in the river and the river took it to the ocean and it was gone. They kept breeding and they kept breeding and their sons and their daughters kept breeding and breeding and breeding until the river was so polluted it didn't flow anymore and it could not take their waste products to the ocean. It couldn't, the ocean eventually would in an overpopulation scenario, be filled with poisons and toxins. And it is. The entire ocean of the earth and all oceans are connected, laden with mercury, PCP. There's no such thing anymore as the pristine waters of such and such ocean. No ocean is pristine. Why? Because of man. And we call ourselves the most intelligent species. No. The most intelligent species on this planet 
that is capable of controlling its own breeding would not overpopulate. What is resonant to me about desperate knowledge and tragic awareness is things like gang life, thug life, the mafia, recruitment, where a kind of invisible or silent system of slavery consumes your soul, controls your choices, denigrates your morale, your moral character, and causes you think, to do things that you would never have left innocent do. Desperate knowledge and tragic awareness has to do with climate change. And yes, we have done this to the environment. Uh-huh. Definitely guilty as charged. Your dishonor. We've done this to the whole world. We may be destroying as many as ten or more species, whole species, and all the individual life forms within that species approximately every 24 hours. And we have no right to do that now, do we? And then it gets to what I learned, horrifyingly enough, on December 25th, 2006, when I happened to be at a neighbor's Christmas party, when some laughing, drunk Sicilian who kept bragging about being a drug dealer and a loan shark, among other things. Why brag about that? Huh? Started laughing loudly and talking about knowing where some children were being held captive. They'd been kidnapped or sold at gunpoint, or uh, purchased at gunpoint from their parents in places like Vietnam, Cambodia, Indonesia, Pakistan, Korea, and so forth. And these kids were enslaved. And yes, the worst was happening to them while they were alive. But around the time they reached 12 or 13, they were actually being killed. And uh, parts of them sold. So, on Christmas Day 2006, I, for the very first time in my entire life, and I'd been there for about half a century, had the rude awakening of tragic awareness of desperate knowledge or desperate knowledge and tragic awareness. And I realized that I was a member of a species so foul, so greedy, so lazy, so corrupt, so stupid, so unconscionable. But it would do little, it would do things like that to little children who'd never had the chance to have choice, to have freedom, to grow up, to grow wise, to be carefree, to know the joy and the bliss of childhood and the magnificent freedom and power of adolescence or adulthood, the wisdom of maturity, the age. They didn't get a chance to be because some miserable patoks, which is a Vulcan Star Trek word for fools, were so stupid they couldn't figure out a better way to make a living than to sell a child. So that put me on a path of becoming an inadvertent expert on human trafficking. And that is when I set on a path of courage and heroism that's led me do a wheelchair, that and my face smashed in, and my pet stolen and destroyed, and my hopes and my goals and my optimism pretty much squashed flat nippers. Not the optimistic, compassionate, forgiving Christ in a skirt, Buddha of compassion anymore. And those words were, those were terms that my neighbors and family had for me when I was a kid. Christ in a skirt and the Buddha of compassion uh -uh, not happening anymore. The only God I could believe in is the God of vengeance. The God that visits humanity with anger, righteousness, and a sword. So, you people who think it's okay to have children aren't paying attention. You're bringing children into a world in which kids are bought and sold and chopped up and don't get a chance to live. 
the December before COVID hit, I think it would be December 2019, there were more kidnappings from and attempted kidnappings from shopping mall parking lots in the United States of America than ever before. There are pipelines to sell little kids to pedophiles that go through Michigan into Canada. Los Angeles, California, I was told by some employees of the Los Angeles District Attorney's Office years ago, is considered the North American capital of human trafficking because people are being shipped into America. Land of opportunity, right? Uh Uh-uh. Their American dream might become an American nightmare because people are being shipped into the United States of America from other countries in shipping containers in the Long Beach Harbor and being brought sometimes at surreptitious gunpoint through um, airports. Think of it. A rich man told me that he wanted to get into human trafficking because he could sell kids And he was so rich, and he was an American business person who was well-known and had a fancy website. He uh, had millions of dollars of Department of Defense contracts to his name. He was working primarily for the United States Department of Defense. Hint, hint. That uh, he, he could get kids to come with him willingly. He would say he was going to give them a good education and a job once they finished college. And he was planning on trafficking and selling them and worse. Not letting them grow up at all. So when I tell you about how I think you should all get sterilized, I'm not being mean-spirited. It's not that I don't love children. It's that I do. It's not that I don't love humanity. It's that I do love humanity. It's not that I don't love the world. Oh, lo, verily I say unto you, I do love the world. But what I'm telling you is that you have a responsibility to yourself, to love, to beauty, to dignity, to moral character, and to the world itself. To wake up, get out of denial, Freud said that everybody has coping mechanisms and ego defense mechanisms and we all have systems in which we kind of control or protect ourselves from highly traumatic information. But he said denial is at the bottom. People who are in denial can never, ever fix problems in their own lives or in the world because you cannot fix a problem you deny exists. So as long as you don't want to hear words as horrible and sad as mine, you're not going to be able to help little kids. You're going to live a life of BS sensation, of wastrel immorality, and you're going to spend your life playing video games and going to bars and doing pretty much nothing until you die. You're going to waste the opportunity to help and serve. Go back to what I learned as a kid studying religions and then uh, by the time I was eight or nine, secular philosophies, non-religious philosophical treatises about ethics and so forth. Half of everything is how you treat everyone else. So I'm asking you people, and I'm asking you with anger and rage and sadness and passion and courage and compassion, stop bringing children onto this world. Please stop now. If you do everything I knew, there's no way you would do that to a little kid. Thank you for letting me share my desperate knowledge and tragic awareness.